All right, everyone, thank you very much for coming out this evening. Um, no, it's a cold one, so we really do appreciate you making the trip to Stellenbosch. Um, not going to keep you too long, so coach, uh, maybe just your thoughts. Hard luck on the defeat, first of all, and maybe your thoughts on the 120 minutes and penalty shootout. Yeah, uh, evening to everyone. Um, yeah, obviously, it's never nice. It's disappointing not to have been able to get to a final, which would have been a massive achievement for us. Um, I think knowing our results and the way the games have gone between ourselves and Sekukuna, it was uh, always going to be a tight game. Um, we've had three draws and a 1-0 loss. And that 1-0 loss, we missed a penalty late in the game to, to take it to a draw. So it's been tight affairs. You can see on the log table, there's also two teams that are close to one another. So um, I thought we started the game really well, um, especially first half, I think. And, you know, that was an opportunity to, to get something. Um, Sekukuna are a type of team that you know, they defend well, they defend in numbers, they experience defensively, they don't give you much space in behind. Um, so you've got to try and get a lead against them to hopefully then let them come out and try and play a bit and then you can then maybe uh, on transition. So, you know, I thought we'd, we'd try to play all the football. Uh, first off, they just basically played it long off CRB, you know, picking up the second ball, trying to, you know, win flick-ons. Our only danger was really us making mistakes or not dealing with the aerial ball or you know losing carelessly the ball uh, in midfield and then maybe they could be dangerous on transition. Otherwise, I thought we controlled the game and we created you know some half uh, chances. Um, second half, I think it became a bit of a 50-50 type game. I think we lost a bit of the control that we had in the first half, um, and then they you know were able to create some good chances themselves. Um, so although it was a no null game, I thought that there was enough opportunities for both teams that there should have been a goal or two in it. Uh, it wasn't meant to be, and then obviously going into extra time, um, you know, it's, it's, it's always that sort of team's a little bit cautious, you don't want to get sucker punched and go down and then, you know, the game's over. So, um, yeah, a game of uh, some missed opportunities today, uh, maybe just not as clinical uh, in that final third couple of half moment chances that we're a little bit maybe unlucky that the ball didn't fall away. Um, so yeah, and then obviously the penalty shootout is, uh, you know, we prepared well for that. Uh, we've done our homework. Um, I know the question will come, so I might as well answer it now. It was a predetermined decision. Uh, who Lee Langefeld himself, um, you know, suggested that uh, Sage Steven be in goal for the penalty shootout. Um, just, you know, obviously the keepers know each other, know each other's strengths. So, Lee felt that, that that would give us the best chance, hence that was the decision um, before the game. And the only thing that could have changed it is if we used all our subs and weren't able to. Um, so yeah, just obviously well done to Sekikune. We wish them the best in the final. We wish both teams the best in the final. Both Pirates and Sekikune may be a big final and a good final for us to watch. Uh, unfortunately, it wasn't our time this time. Question at the back. Can you hear me from there, Coach? <laughs> um, once again, unlucky, Coach. Um, not the ideal result uh, for, for anybody based here. Um, but if there's anything from this game uh, that you can paint out, because I struggled a little bit, but maybe because uh, I'm also for the result going positively for the local team. If there's anything you can point out and say, we got it wrong here, we got it wrong there, if this could have just gone right for us, um, is there anything uh, in tonight's game? I think it's, it's not always an easy question to answer directly after a loss. Obviously, one will have to go back and just analyse the game and, and see you know, certain situations where maybe we just should have done things better. I just felt that there were times where we just forced you know, the ball a little bit too early and too long in our passing, which got uh, intercepted a number of times. I thought that if we just remained a bit calmer, take, took care of the ball a bit better, just kept moving the ball, eventually gaps would be created. Um, so a little bit of maybe impatience um, in sort of the final and attacking third with the ball. We just needed to be a little bit more sort of um, sort of confident and, and, and using the ball a lot better than what we did. And um, yeah, it looked like the pitch is a little bit hard a little bit greasy with the dew, which made it maybe a little bit difficult um, play slipping and you know your first touch being a little bit maybe tested. So, you know, they're a team that don't give you much space to tuck in behind. Uh, obviously, their lack of pace, they play a lot deeper um, and that takes a lot of the strengths away from our team. So we knew that we have to play well and have good combination plays. 
uh, in that final third, which we had our moments, but probably not enough of those moments. So in hindsight, that's probably an area that we needed to be uh, a lot better at. I'd like, thank you, Rudy Massimino from CCFM and Disco Boys. Coach, I'd like, um, you talked about the long balls. Um, was it the call from the bench? Was it you, the plans to play the long balls? Or was it the setup of the Sikukuna that made the guys to play the long balls? Yeah, I don't think we played like long ball football. I think that was then uh, just in our build up, and then when we would get the ball, we would then try and play our fullbacks too early. And uh, whereas maybe one more pass would have then created the you know the better chances and not have the ball intercepted. So um, it wasn't. And yeah, obviously you know they do get numbers behind the ball in that, and sometimes when you play one way and it doesn't come off, maybe you try a little bit. But um, it, yeah, we just don't do enough of what we maybe had hoped to to be doing. Uh, on the night. Uh, good evening, Coach Adler, once again, we are from Israel, Africa. Um, I'm sure by now you have had the experience where you've got sort of like youngsters in a team. In a situation like this, um, they would really be hard done. Um, what do you say to players like this, especially something that will serve as a reminder that uh, they still quite a long opportunity in their careers to still relive a moment like this or so be in a position like this, they still have the time. Like I said, I think you've got the experience as well when you look at it from the previous team. Yeah, no, I think uh, the message straight after the game was to the players that, um, you know, our time will come. Um, if you take, you know, since in your ownership of the club, we've won promotion, we've won a Disky League, we've won the next gen tournament. We, we're unlucky not to progress to a semi-final of the MTN. We also lost on penalties against Chiefs. Now we're in a semi-final of a, of a cup. So, you know, it, 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 there's progress and, and you know, opportunities will come. So these are, there's two ways you, you look at this. You, you know, you can look at it and grow from it and learn from it and, and make you even stronger and going forward and learn the lessons that, uh, you know, from evenings like this that will just make us uh, uh, in next time in these opportunities maybe deal with it a lot better so or you can just you know be disappointed so you know uh, trust that we will take the the first option learn from it grow from it the young players these are moments that you know it's it's experience building it's it's the disappointment of losing the disappointment of not making a final and you know going forward they'll remember those disappointments and you know even work harder to to turn that into positive so um, yeah, a lot of lessons learned. Um, but again, you know, when you've got players younger than 22, you know, players like Jaden Adams, uh, Ibrahim Jabbar, Devin Titus having, you know, won leagues with a club, um, gone to tournaments overseas. Our Disky team is travelling to India in a week's time for the next gen to go defend that trophy. You know, those experiences that they're gaining, hopefully one day, uh, we'll be in a position to be challenging on a regular basis uh, for these type of uh, trophies. Since you're on the topic of young players, do you think that Makani will be a potential contender for young players this season? I do. Um, I think but himself and Jaden Adams, um, the consistency that they've shown throughout the season, I do believe that they should be in the discussion. Um, definitely. Um, you know, Ashley uh, Makani, I played with Ashley Makanya that's <laughs> yeah, all the way to um, you know he, the way he's handled himself and grown and represented the country at national level and cemented his place in, in our team you know the season he's had uh, it's only a matter of time before he you know is, is one of the best central defenders in our country um, so yes I would trust and believe that he would at least be in the discussion yes. Coach, um, I must buy Reynes as well as um, Ortiz. Um, what words of encouragement do you have for them? Um, especially, obviously, they're not as young as the other players you mentioned. Yeah, no, um, you know, with Iki, you know, we probably, he's got us into a position there where we are on the log table as well as getting into the final, after the semi final. You know, the six goals that he scored have been massive for us to reach this stage. So, you know, for him to miss, he's obviously. Devastated, disappointed, Ortiz, you know, it's been a long journey for him. Uh, he was out for a year. He only had his first start midweek uh, after the whole season out um, with injuries. So, you know, when he sort of missed the penalty, he's been a little bit sort of inconsolable. Obviously, you know, you feel that you've let the team down. 
Um, but you know, we can't. That that's just not part of the the way we speak as a club. Everybody's responsible. We're all together in it. Um, you know, we should have most likely have done the job in the 90 minutes or on the 120 and not allowed it to go to penalties because that can become a 50-50 situation. So. Uh, Ikri will learn from it, you know, he, he gets his head up quickly and Ortiz, uh, you know, we need to wake up tomorrow. Uh, we've got two big league games left, uh, you know, top eight now becomes a priority for us so that uh, it's not long away. August, uh, September, MTN 8, we want to be there, we want to again be challenging for a trophy, so we've got to pick ourselves up uh, quickly uh, and make sure that we put in two big performances to the way to Maritzburg and Galaxy at home. Ready for the last three questions, please. Coach, uh, uh, no, it's too early maybe to, to ask you this because um, there's still something to achieve in the league. But can you chalk this down as uh, you, you've said progress and, and all these uh, milestones that you guys have achieved this year? Um, but to, to maybe a lend, in layman's terms, for someone who's seen Skelmos for the first time this season, would you chalk it down if they asked you, how do you feel about this season? Would you say, yeah, satisfied uh, with how things turn? Yeah, I do think so. I mean, you know, it's days like this where the season either becomes great and special, you know, make a final and finish top eight. And we didn't make the final, we've made a semi-final and hopefully we can finish the top eight. Then one has to look back and believe that it's turned out to be a, a decent season. And we had a lot of changes at the beginning of the season, you know, lost a lot of players. It was an intentional turnaround to, to have a three-year cycle. So we believe that this team uh, next season and the following season can again you know take us even further than tonight and into a final um, and hopefully you know be consistently challenging in the top 6 uh, on a regular basis so um, right now it's 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 be, it's 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 a goodish season to finish top 8 it becomes a really good season don't finish top 8 then you know it becomes an average season um, coach, with um, Pirates in the final and, and almost secure, you know, Cup Champions League spot, uh, and the other team in the final likely going to the Cup, the Cup. Does it feel like a, even a bigger blow? You know, missing out on the tournament. Yes, it does. Last season uh, we missed out on goal difference. Uh, finished fourth on uh, goal difference. That uh, we didn't get the Cup spot this year. You know, win tonight. We, I don't think it's mathematically done that. Pirates finished second, but most likely. So, um, yeah, it was a driving force for us, um, you know, to get into a final, to be able to one game away from winning a trophy. And, um, you know, we want to be doing that on a regular basis. And obviously, the big incentive was that we could be playing in Africa and we got to the final. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's one of the many disappointments. Uh, you know, there's a lot of things that one can say being in a final, what it does for a club. The rewards, besides you know, getting medals and prize money, and playing in Africa, you know, taking it one more game for our fans and supporters. So yeah, we it, it, it's hurtful that we uh, did not advance. All right, I think we're done. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you, coach. Thank you.